thank you for joining us today. We are getting started um, our the whole month of March. We're going to be talking about some behind the scenes slash backstage pass slash front row seat. I don't know. I'm giving you a special access to um, what we're doing with our launch of Copy School 2019. Well, the win. Uh, so we're bringing Rye in to share some secrets. Rye, of course, say hello, Rye. The arcing wave, hello. So we are giving you behind the scenes views into our launch of Copy School 2019 starting today. Um, so the next few weeks, same Z's, lots of cool stuff to see. If you are involved in launches or you want to be, this will be very helpful for you. Right. Yeah. Mr. Schwartz, what are you sharing with us today? Let me find a button. There we go. Share. 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 You're a good share. Cool. <laughs> I love sharing. I excelled at sharing in thing. What, what, in when did we learn sharing? I don't know. Kindergarten. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Everyone seen this? Copy school confidential. <laughs> Um, this is one of those things where you choose the keynote theme first and then the title comes later. <laughs> I'm like, well, it looks like it's copy school confidential. So we're just going to roll with that. Um, yeah, no, in all seriousness, um, Joe, you had this idea pretty recently. Like, let's give the behind the scenes access. And like, it struck me. I'm like, that is a really interesting idea because it means that you have to feel so comfortable and good about your marketing that you could actually be totally transparent about what you're doing. And it, I actually flashed back to like a few years ago, not even that long ago, when you'd sit in strategy meetings with your client and they would talk about their clients, their prospects, as in we're going to make them feel this and then they're going to do this. And you actually like talk to the talk about your prospects in the least human way possible and how your marketing is going to convert them as if you know, they're essentially pawns in your game and that you're just like holding the puppet strings. So um, what I really liked about this is like, as I was unpacking, I'm like, no, I actually feel really, really good about sharing why we're doing what we're doing and, you know, what that's meant to create and inspire. So yeah, side note, that's a good litmus test. If you're not comfortable being transparent about why you're doing what you're doing, maybe you should try doing something different. I don't know. Just a thought. Cool. I love it. It's a good maybe. thought, right? Yeah. Copy School Confidential. Yeah, <laughs> we need the music. All right, so this is all about video one, which just went live yesterday. So if you haven't seen that yet. Um, I think Sarah's going to um, chat the link out. Yeah, chat it out. It'll be a good reference for what I'm going to talk about today. But what I really want to talk about, and it is a fairly longish video, so we can't break down every single line, but I do want to talk about the big four pieces that really, um, yeah, that are really the foundation of everything we're saying in video one. So we're going to start talking about the big idea. And a lot of people have different takes on what the big idea, big idea is or isn't. I'm going to give you my version and the version I use um, essentially in every launch I plan and write for. Then we're going to unpack it. We're going to offer the path and the blue ocean bridge. And then we're going to talk about what it means to make the first move in this context. Cool. Love it. I hate like the number four. It just doesn't work well for anything. Like four, but, th but there was no number five, and I couldn't stop at three. Like it really sucks. I like four. Four you is like actually four? the Weeb family number. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. I drove uh, a race car. Whoa! I, I, I don't know. If, I don't know. If families had numbers. We did. Clear. Cool. Right. We did, no, really, like, like my brother, like when everybody had like a number for a sports team, everybody had to be number four. four. I was number four. That was my soccer uniform. Yeah. See? Am I secretly family and we just don't know it? We... Welcome to the Thank family. you. You're welcome. Thanks, thanks for not inviting me to Thanksgiving dinner ever. But don't whatever. worry. You're lucky yeah. not to be invited. Don't forget to vote on this one. There's a story yeah. there. There's a um, and cool. So moving on, let's talk about the big idea. So a lot of people make a big fuss about this. I'm going to just ah, backwards. I'm going to give you the 
simple version of it. So we're not creating it out of the ether. It's not this mystical idea that strikes you um, in the most inopportune times or at 3 a.m. when you have this eureka moment. It's actually um, something that I've always arrived at after I've already been usually deep in the copywriting process, after I've written a few emails, after I've done a lot of um, surveys and customer interviews and stuff like that, it usually comes after. And it's usually something I name rather than create. And I'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, the big idea, it's usually something you're going to start with the end in mind, um, you know, really at the end of the user experience of your product. That's really the place where the big idea is found. Um, it should be simple, something very easy to grasp in one sentence, nothing confusing, nothing too complex, yet also exciting and inspiring, something that cuts through the white noise and just invites your prospect to um, imagine themselves in a different context than they currently are. So it should have that inspiring pull to it. And you know, by the same token, it really is the true north for everything else to come in your marketing. It really needs to have that magnetic pull um, for your client and also, you know, everything you're going to write to support it. Everything should be about realizing the big idea, that, um, the reality. And then you got to just ask, you know, once you think you've nailed it, um, just ask yourself, would my reader invest time, energy, money in aligning with that big idea and everything that's involved in aligning with it? Cool. So that's really the short notes of the big idea. Now, how did this play out. So for us, it's really the most profitable person in the room. So it's short, it's easy to grasp, it's inspiring. Um, we're not calling it the most profitable copywriter in the room. We're not calling it the best copywriter in the room. We're not calling it the most profitable marketing person in the room. It's really, um, that is the end result. That is the true north of someone who's gone through all our training. We want them to be able to walk into any room, whether that's a Zoom room or a boardroom or whatever it looks like, and just have the confidence that comes from being the most profitable person in the room. Um, so this wasn't necessarily something that we created out of the ether. It's really um, starting at the end. What does that journey look like? How does it actually play out in the real world after someone has taken our training and um, gone through that process and put that into action? And that's where it was named, not necessarily created. So that's how it played out for us. Um, for Amy, it was dead simple. So this was the last launch we did there. Um, this is for Amy Porterfield, by the way, just as yeah. a backup. Yeah. So this was for her recent Digital Course Academy launch, which was her biggest launch ever in over 10 years of doing this. And it was all around the most simple, big idea. You know, it was really putting a name to the end result that all these people wanted, which was to not just have a course that was an add-on to their existing business, but really have a course that is the main driver of their business. So we gave a name to it. You know, it was about being a digital course business owner, you know, simple term, but yet cutting through the white noise of everything else that they've been exposed to as course creators. Everything is about create your online course, create passive revenue, but this was about creating a digital course that is your business. So a little simple tweak that really just captures and puts a name to the end result that we're leading them towards. Cool. All right. So how do you find your big idea? Um, a few simple steps here. This is just based on my experience, but gather those user success stories, ideally past clients, people you're actively working with. Um, that's usually going to be the first place you should look and just don't just get kind of bare bones and result, really talk to them and see how that's playing out, how they're feeling, really dimensionalize it. We're going to talk about sense surgery in a future video in that workshop series. And that's something you're going to want to apply here, like peel back the layers of the placeholder terms, ask them why that matters, how that looks, how it's showing up and really try to be able to um, visualize a whole movie of that end result playing out for them. And if you had to give a name to that movie, that's probably the name of your big idea. Yeah. Um, you know, if we were to write a movie that everyone in the world would watch and it would probably win so many Oscars about, you know, the copy school journey, it would probably be called the most profitable person in the room. Yeah. Um, so it does um, work as a movie title to the life of your most successful student. Now, uh, Rai, would you yeah. say Nick Cage would obviously play you in this movie or... 
we need someone a little more pale. So um, who's who's a really good pale actor? Is there... Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh my god! How did you say that? Like, what did your mouth just do to be able to utter that? Like, yes. my jaw, my jaw hurts. Ah. Christina Ricci. Oh my god! Girl, I've always wanted to be played by like, what. Ha- what happened to Christina Ricci? <laughs> I don't know. She was in that like Mad Men knockoff kind of TV show, which mm. vanished. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can't talk about it right now, but if anyone could tell me what happened to Clive Owen, like do it. Cause I was going to post that on Quora earlier and I just didn't have time to, but what happened to Clive Owen? Like he was huge and now he's just, I don't know. I don't anyway. know. All right. I don't know. Uh, all right. Um, so yeah, the other, option is to really just journal, just do it as an exercise. You know, once you really know who your avatar is, once you've um, outlined a lot of the aspects of who they are, what they're after, what matters to them. And we have all sorts of journaling questions inside 10X launches. We could even share some. Um, But yeah, once you've journaled that, really go deeper. You know, what does their life look like a month after, you know, using your product or two months down the line and really go post Um, This is really one of the few times um, in our marketing where I love to go even further out and look at the biggest, most aspirational outcome. You know, I talk a lot about the quickest, most valuable win. This is really on the other end of the spectrum. And that actually works really well for finding your big idea. And if you had to give a name to it, that's going to be your big idea. And then the other question is like, what's the one unifying term identifier or badge of honor that just sums it all up and most profitable person in the room. That's what we're using digital, digital course business owner. That's what we use for Amy. So it's simple. It sums it up. It just, you know what we're talking about. Um, And then yeah, name it, don't create it. Cool. Big idea. Yep. I know we, we talk about big ideas in 10X landing pages and in 10X sales pages inside Copy mm. School. Um, I just think it's, I mean, there's so much to talk about around a big idea and finding it, but it also feels like there's this sense of having to s- momentarily suspend disbelief because most people mm. coming into this, like most copywriters are used to being told by their client internal or external like essentially i can do your job if i have more time i can do your job um your wordsmithing and kind of minimizing what a copywriter does not because they simply because they don't get what copywriters actually do and copywriters Mm -hmm. hear that so much so they join the conversation with this one idea of like i'm pretty sure i'm worth more than anybody even thinks i am including myself and then when you see this aspirational idea of becoming the most profitable person in the room, you might not believe it right away, but you want to. And so there's something there with like the transformation, which happens across the launch. Um, So anyway, I'm not going to, but it's just so, it's just such Mm -hmm. a good topic and important to think about how, when people are scripting their own sideways sales page and getting to a place, when you find that big idea, it often does feel like, I don't quite believe you, but I want to. So I'm going to stick with you and see right. if you prove to me that that's the thing, that it's real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All yeah. Right. I'm, I'm high-fiving you. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, what's this guy still doing on my screen? Like, I could have sworn I put a much better picture on this slide, but... That's awesome. Just, I love his suit. Hi. He just, <laughs> he just wants to keep coming back. All right, so part two is really about unpacking it. So Joe just mentioned about, you know, suspending disbelief and you could probably suspend disbelief for a few seconds, maybe a minute, but at some point you really do need to follow that up by unpacking that and just showing proof about, you know, what it means and that other people are actually living it and that they went through that transformation. So that's a really important part to follow up with pretty immediately, whether that's playing it on your sideways sales letter or on a sales page, wherever it's appearing you do want to follow it up by unpacking it and really dimensionalizing it like everything else we've been talking about. You know, what does it mean to live up to that title or that big idea? What does it mean to be the most profitable person in the room? You know, it's a cool term, but what does it actually look like? What does it actually feel like? What does it actually earn them in the real world? So you really got to unpack it, um, show them, you know, what belongingness to that um, club or that, you know, title 
um, does for them? How does it feel compared to their current reality? You really want to create contrast there. You know, they're willing to suspend disbelief if there's um, the opportunity to invest in a version of themselves that is so much better better than their current reality. That's usually what's going to earn you the ability to keep, um, just keep down that track. Even if there is a little bit of disbelief, if they believe that um, this opportunity is so much better than what they're currently experiencing, they're going to go with you for that journey, um, you know, just to see if it's possible. And it doesn't mean they're not going to be skeptical. It just means that you'll, you've earned the right to continue building that argument and showing them um, how they could do it, which is actually going to be in part three. Um, and then finally, why does any of this matter? Why do you want to be the most profitable person in the room? Why would anyone want to be a digital course business owner? So this is once again about um, giving your prospect the ability to continue investing themselves into that big idea um, by, you know, showing just the value of it, showing how valuable it is to ascribe to that big idea, if that makes sense. Yeah, cool. You good? I mean, the verb ascribe is underused, I think. (laughs) That's a fair point. Yeah. I'm going to make a point of using ascribe in every single conversation today. I think that's good. Yeah. Cool. I don't think I have one more conversation scheduled for the rest of the day. (laughs) Sounds about right. You're a copywriter. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Why I'm so pale. I don't talk to anybody. Um, Cool. So the goal here with really unpacking it and the section where you unpack it either in your video or your sales page is you really want that to be a summary of what they want. And that should be present in your big idea. And what that does is it really gives that life, that energy, that magnetic pull or symbolism to that one short sentence, which can be used as a quick reference to all those things. If you could train your reader or your prospect that being the most profitable person in the room means all this then as they see most profitable person in the room later on in your marketing or throughout your marketing, it immediately evokes all those things that you just unpacked. So it's a very quick, efficient um, way of just kind of bringing all those things to the table without having to unpack it every single time. So that's what a big idea does in my view is it just, it's representative of so many things and it's delivered efficiently. Um, Yeah. So that's what we're going for in unpacking it. Noise. Noise. All right. Um, This is how we did it with Amy. Um, Joe and I each tried to recreate this pose, um, but we didn't do it. We just. That's right. When we did our photo shoot the other weekend. Yeah. We couldn't pull. We couldn't pull it off. It is. It is. Yeah. But naturally, we were. We were very praying mantisy. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're too Canadian for some reason. I feel like being Canadian has something to do with it. I feel like that's something you can only do when you live in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's. It's like being british a little bit i think the brits would also have a hard time with this boat that was full love for my british friends too, too much too much emotion <laughs> like we're like too much too much happiness too vulnerable what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay so anyway this is how it played out there we had a section on the sales page um this was in I think section two or section three, so not very far down, and we really unpacked what it's like being the owner of a of a thriving digital course business. Really, why that matters, how their life looks, how that contrasts against um, their current reality of either not having a course at all or just having a course be a bolt on or add on on top of everything else they have to do. Um, So yeah, this is where you dimensionalize it, you unpack it, and then it becomes a very convenient. term that just encompasses all the things that they want. And every time they see digital course business owner later on, they know what it represents. All right. Next thing, uh, probably the most important one. This is where you turn that um, skepticism, you know, and that disbelief into an, oh, I really think I can do that, you know, and that's where um, things take that turn. And that's where the coaching, the conversion really um, accelerates and the transformation really starts um, happening for your prospects. Obviously, this is just the question. How does one achieve the big idea? Great. I love the idea of being the most profitable person in the room. I love what it represents. I really want that in my life. But how does one actually embark on that journey? What's the path? And the path is both internally. What are the beliefs and mindsets, um, reframes necessary to um, to start embodying 
being the most profitable person in the room? What's the path, the external actions, decisions? What am I actually doing day to day in my life um, to be able to achieve that? And for each, what does it currently look like? You know, it's the moment of highest tension, you know, when they're not um, embodying those beliefs, mindsets, or taking those actions. What does that look like currently? Moment of highest tension and what will it look like, which is the moment of highest pleasure. And we're creating contrast and friction between those two realities for each step of the path. Cool. So for Copy School 2019, this is in the video that um, that is up right now. So the three steps we have there. So this is the three-step path to being the most profitable person in the room. And we gave it definition. You know, it's mastering the places where cash changes hands, the places um, in your sales funnel. So Facebook, Instagram ads, landing pages, emails, long form sales pages, you know, the most profitable person in the room knows how to write copy across these four places and get results, period. Uh, step two is need for speed. Never start from scratch and never second guess. You know, if you are the most profitable person in the room, you don't have time to guess you don't have time to labor you don't have time to literally start from scratch every time you need to write an email or a landing page or a long form sales page because you're busy you're either a super in demand copywriter with a ton of clients who just want to throw money at you to do this for them or you're a business owner or a marketer that just can't be derailed by something that could take anywhere between 10 and 50 hours without knowing where it actually lands on the spectrum you need to be able to do it fast and with confidence and step three is obviously you need to commit to doing these things. And, you know, we actually opened up with a horror story that was the opposite of committing to being the most profitable person in the room. So we were able to bring that back there. So what we're doing here is, and it, yeah, Amy, we had five key shifts. So some people know this as sacred cows. Anyone who's kind of taken a training in 10X launches, um, it equates well with that. But it's essentially really creating the criteria that allows you to live up to that aspirational big idea or title that we outlined before. And this is where you're not guessing. You really do want to serve your audience by creating that path. And that is more than anywhere else where they need you to exhibit your authority and your expertise and your experience in a way that's truly of service. What is that path to living out that big idea? Cool. So when you do that successfully, you build what I call the blue ocean bridge. Those antenna sales pages will be familiar with this term, but essentially if somebody ascribes and says yes to all these things, that this is what is needed to be the most profitable person in the room, then there is literally not another copywriting training on the planet that satisfies all those things so specifically and directly. Um, with Amy, there are so many courses out there that teach you about creating a course, but there's not a single one on the planet that satisfies those five key shifts and mindsets and um, that satisfies that path, that satisfies that path to being a digital course business owner. So you create the big idea, you create the path, and then your product literally is the only one on the planet that can satisfy that path. And that's how you build a blue ocean bridge over a red sea or a red ocean or a red water. I don't even know what this picture is. How do they even achieve that effect? Anyone know? I don't know what's happening there. Like <laughs> underwater. Yeah. I think it's Kool-Aid. from Jaws. Emily answered yeah. it. It's Kool-Aid. It's Kool-Aid. <laughs> definitely, definitely Kool-Aid. One little packet yeah. at a time, ripping it mm-hmm. open. I like it. Yeah. Cool. Red. All right. So yes, I do want you to spend the most time on number three when you do this, because that path is really going to be, um, yeah, the most impactful as far as just setting you apart from your competitors and also just giving your prospect confidence that you can bring them to that aspirational outcome or that big idea that you really bled with at the beginning. Finally, um, you got to make the first move. You know, you can't expect your prospect to be committed to um, this big idea until you are on their behalf. There is going to be inertia. There is going to be friction. There is going to be resistance at the beginning. You're really asking them to change their identity in many ways. Um, And that's going to require you to see them as that person first. You know, think about who you enjoy spending the most time with in your own life. You know, is it the people who reinforced that version of you four years ago that you didn't really like, or maybe you like, but not as much as you 
like the version of you that you're trying to become. So for me, I like spending time with people who are constantly evoking a version of me that doesn't exist yet. They see potential in me that I haven't yet realized in myself. And they're constantly drawing that out with their ideas or their thoughts or even their suggestions. Um, and that's what you want to do with your prospect. You want to invest in their reality before they've had the courage to invest in it themselves. And that's to me what true leadership in marketing is. Can you make that first move by honoring their claim as that big idea first? You know, can you honor it emotionally, which you are doing in your copy? Can you honor it practically? Like I'll show you in a second how we're doing it. Um, and when you do that successfully, just like in a real life relationship, you're going to trust and like that person so much more than the people that just kind of hammering you with, you know, fear-based stuff trying to get them to do something. Yeah. Um, so that's what it looks like for us. Um, we are honoring it practically with this little thing that's in our workbook, you know, and there's some copy at the bottom of this. This is not a discount. This is us literally honoring our reader as the most profitable person in the room. You know, we're honoring that claim before they've fully embodied it themselves. And um, that's one thing we're doing new this year, constantly honoring um, our readers as that most profitable person. So yeah. that's it. Those are, um, that's how we scripted video one, all 800 minutes of it. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> recording we should do a behind the scenes of actually recording uh, or creating these but yeah i think it's really why i wanted to bring you in to talk about this particular rise not just to be transparent with people who are like we know people are curious about launches a lot of the copywriters that follow copy hackers are involved in launches or want to be um and so we know that people are like swiping things and paying attention to things so we wanted to give that but one of the biggest things that i've struggled with in um, launches when we're learning about launches Lily knows this well <laughs> um, is is actually the how so a lot of people will tell you what to do right do a long do a sideways sales page or sideways sales letter um, do videos and make them compelling what <laughs> um, and yeah. so we always have to go to the how level we don't as copywriters, we don't get to say, oh, just go do that. We're the ones who go do it. So mm -hmm. um, I really, I think a default for a lot of people is, oh, we need to educate, educate, educate people in these videos. We're going, they're going to buy training. So we need to know that they care about training. So we're going to just like give them all these tactics and techniques. And when it comes down to it, like you've talked about this too. And we just, we, we teach different things. Mm -hmm. And it's not a question of like, going through tactics in the sideways sales page, but this other stuff that you've talked about today. So I wanted to point that out for everybody who's like, but where does the education come? It will be throughout. You'll be teaching things throughout. It's just not an exercise in creating content that teaches techniques. Yeah, that's right. I think like one thing I did want to mention, and I'm glad you brought this up, is that teaching itself and education requires context. You know, why are we learning this, you know, and if you just kind of give techniques without the context, without the big idea that that education is trying to empower them to become, then it's just that it's just information that may be useful, but not transformative. And that's really why we lead with, um, you know, video one being all about the big idea about getting buy in on that big idea and packing why that matters and then giving the path first. And to me, that's really the context needed for all the techniques and tactics and, you know, education to come, which is coming in video two and three to just land within the context of becoming the most profitable person in the room first. You know, if we just gave sales page techniques without saying that, being able to master sales pages is um, one of the four places where cash changes hands that the most profitable person in the room needs to master, then it's just sales page training. It's not right. sales page training to make you the most profitable person in the room. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it sounds subtle, but it's um, definitely an important point that I want you guys to really try to work with. Dig it. Thank you for all your great participation. Rai, thanks for sharing this walkthrough of uh, scripting that first video and how we came up with stuff. 
Um, we'll see you then next week. Next week, I won't be on. Wahida from my team will be subbing in for me. Sarah will be here. Rai will be teaching. I will be on a plane for anybody going out to TCCIRL in NYC. Um, yep, all of those. I like it. Uh, then we'll see you there. So thank you for the safe trip. I know, right? And we'll see you next week. Or I won't, but I'll watch the replay. Okay, have a good one, guys. Bye. Yep. Bye, guys. It's the 90s. Yeah.